In this video, we're going to be checking out the Picron E300 LFP portable power station. Now, I've had a Picron power station for a couple years now. It's the E600 LFP, and it's basically the big brother to this one. And I've been using it for the last year and a half or so. It works out great, and it's a very convenient way of having power on the go. And when I saw they had a little one that's basically half the capacity and half the power, I figured I'd give that one a try too. So, in this video, we're going to review it, test it out, and see how good it is. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery. Today we're checking out the Picron E300 LFP portable power station, and we're just going to jump right into the specs and talk about what this thing can do, how much power it's got, and then we're going to test it out with a couple different devices. So first and foremost, when you're looking at a power station like this, you're looking at two main specs, and that's how much power can it give you, that's the power output, and how long can it give you that power, that's the capacity. So the power output comes in a couple different varieties. We got the AC over here and we got the DC over here. But for most cases, we talk about power output as being the AC, since that's the biggest way you can draw power out of this thing. So we're looking at two AC plugs here that can deliver 300 watts continuously with a boost output of 600 watts max. So basically every power station like this has some kind of continuous output and it's usually about double that for the, the max output or what they call the boost output. So I'm just going to call this a 300 watt output for the AC side. That's probably where the name E300 comes from. Now besides the output, I said the capacity is also important and basically that's how long this thing can run once you start drawing power out of it. And when it's fully charged, it has a capacity of 288 watt hours. Now 288 watt hours means that it can deliver 288 watts for an hour but if we just do some quick math and round things off a little bit if we go back to this 300 watts output then it can deliver that 300 watts for just under an hour if you're drawing less than that maybe you're drawing just 100 watts out then you can do that for about three hours so when you're deciding what size power station you need just trying to figure out what you're going to be plugging into it how much that's going to be drawing, and then do the math from there if you're not sure how much your device draws you can pick up a little power meter like this plug your device into it, plug this into the wall, see how much power it's drawing, and you can even have this thing plugged in full time and it will tell you how many watt hours of energy it's been drawing. So 300 watts out, 288 watt hours of capacity. From there, we look at some of the other features it has. It's got a DC power port here, basically a cigarette lighter plug, and it is good for 12 volts at 10 amps or 120 watts. We've got two convenient little barrels down here. One is a 24 volts, one is 12 volts, those are both 5 amps output, so basically you got 120 watts available here and 60 watts available on this one. So if you have a device that can run on DC and you've got the right cable for it, you can plug right into here and bypass the cigarette lighter, bypass the AC adapter, and it's just a little bit more convenient and a little bit more efficient. Continuing on with the DC, we've got a USB-C output here which is a 100 watt capable power delivery and it's got an arrow pointing both ways so we can also charge into that but I believe it's only 45 watts going in. Some of the newer devices on the market right now will allow you to charge in through your USB-C port at about 100 or 140 watts but having 45 watts capable there is better than nothing. And then we've got two USB-A outputs here basically for phone or tablets 18 watts each. If we rotate this thing around and look at the side We've got a light on the side here. Push and hold to turn it on. It's got three levels of brightness, including an SOS signal, and then push and hold to turn it back off. Underneath these protective flaps here, we've got the AC input port on the right. So using an AC cable plugged right into your wall, you can get up to 300 watts charging input. So you can charge this thing up in just about an hour from zero all the way up to 100. And then under this flap here, is another barrel which is a 12 to 28 volt DC input 100 watts max and this is basically going to be your solar input. Picron makes a 100 watt solar panel that has this exact plug on it. If you use a different brand then you may have to get an adapter. Now in addition to using this as a 100 watt max solar input you can also use it for a cigarette lighter plug if you're driving in your car and it includes in this handy little bag here a cable to do that. So let's look what's inside here. We've got a cigarette lighter plug, plug this into your car, and you've got the right DC barrel right there, which will go into the input to give you 120 watts input to recharge this thing while you're driving. Also in the bag is the AC power cord. 
for recharging from the wall. I love the fact that they give you this little bag here. I've got a lot of these power stations and sometimes you get the cables all mixed up. My Picron 600 LFP came with a nice little tote bag and I've never lost the cables for that one or confused them because they're always nice and organized. So that's a nice little touch. Probably cost the company a couple extra bucks, but it's well worth it to me. All right, so we talked about all the specs. Let's go ahead and plug some things in and test it out. All right, I'm gonna start by testing out the AC power output with my trusty little dipper here. It's basically a small crock pot. And I'm gonna start off by turning on the AC power by holding the button for a second. And you hear a click telling you that it turned on and the fan spins up just for a second. And now it's ready to go. So let's go ahead and turn this on to low. And now on the screen, you're gonna see an output here of around 80 watts. And with the battery sitting at about 67% full right now, it's saying that it will last about 1.9 hours running this little dipper at this power level. Now you can also see on the screen here, a little fan indicator. And there is a fan over here just to keep in the internals nice and cool while that inverter is running. And you can hear it, but it's definitely quieter than when it first spinned up when I turned on the inverter. So let's go ahead and turn this baby up to high. And now we're pulling about 128 watts. And again, because we're at 67% full, we're going to be able to run that for about 1.1 hours. Now, while this is running, we get the battery power here heating up the little dipper here. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the AC power adapter and see if we get pass through charging. All right, now it took a couple seconds for it to figure out what was going on and ramp the power up. But now we've got 324 watts coming in, and that's coming in from the wall, and we've got 118 watts going out. So now it is charging up, and instead of telling you how long it's able to run for, it's telling you now how long it's going to take to fully charge it. So about 0.3 hours at this rate to fill the battery all the way up because we're giving it more power than we're taking back out of it. Now in addition, we've got a little icon here that says UPS. So because we have it plugged into the wall and we have something plugged into the AC ports, it's working in UPS mode. So if we lost power for whatever reason, or if I unplugged the cable on the left, then it would continue to send power to the little dipper, basically acting as a UPS. All right, so now I've plugged in a USB-C cable here to that 100 watt port, and I've got this anchor battery bank here, which is basically just working as a load to simulate maybe plugging in a laptop or something something that's going to draw a lot more power than a tablet. And now we can see our output jumped up to 220 watts output. That's a combination of both the 100 or so that's coming out of here and the 100 that's coming out of here. And the good thing about using a power bank like this is we can see on the screen here that it is bringing in 93 watts. Now, even with the little dipper cooking some queso and the laptop or whatever it is that this is simulating being powered from here, we still have 325 watts coming in and only 220 watts coming out so it's still continuing to charge this number is going up and our time to charge is going down now like i said if we lost power i'm going to just go ahead and pull this cord out the side here so now the cord is out our input should disappear our output is continuing to draw power out i've still got my laptop or whatever this is simulating and i've got the little dipper going there and we are seeing now that we have 0.7 hours to run both of these devices, pulling about 228 watts out, and that's just from battery alone. We have the ability to turn off either one of these without unplugging them, just by simply turning off whichever function we want. So press and hold for a couple seconds. Now I've killed the power to the DC side. We've dropped the output down to 125 watts, and now we're just powering up the AC side. Now there is a app that you can download from the app store to control some of these functions and I was able to download it. It was able to find this device, but it was never able to pair. So I'm not going to show you that. If app control is critical, then I would go with another product such as the Anchor products or the EcoFlow. But I think we've given this thing a pretty good test. If you have any questions about any of the specifications or any of the tests, go ahead and drop those down in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. This is just a quick little review on the Picron E300 LFP, but I think I covered all the features. If you're interested in buying one of these, I will leave links down in the description below. Now, as I'm summing this up, I'm noticing that I forgot one feature on here, 
that some of the other power banks don't have. And there is right on top of the power station is a wireless charger. So if you have a phone that's capable of wireless charging, you can throw that up there and that's just a nice, nice little added convenience so you don't have to use a cable. So final thoughts on the Picron E300 LFP. Like I said, I've been using my 600 LFP for a long time and I love it. The market is absolutely crowded right now with different manufacturers making similar products all at similar size and price range. With that in mind, I have a lot of reviews on my channel. Go ahead and check that out. You'll see reviews for all the major brands like Anchor, EcoFlow, Blue Eddy, Jackery, and of course, Picron. So that's going to wrap it up for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you got something out of it, I appreciate a thumbs up. Like I said, check out the rest of the channel. I've got some more reviews coming up, and more importantly, some more comparison reviews coming up. So keep an eye on the channel and hit that subscribe button. But I thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out. <music>